Hello and welcome to this episode of Witch on Witch. We're going to be discussing the autumn equinox. As you can all see, today I am joined by the lovely Georgia Liberty of Wicked Conservative. How be you, Mal? How be I am you? I am staying alive. It is that time of the year, and I'm sure everybody's feeling the feelings of the atmosphere, and we're gonna talk about it today, aren't we? That we certainly are. Uh, just to give everyone a heads up, we're going to discuss what the autumn equinox is because uh, perhaps there are newcomers or people who are not associated with the faith that will be wondering what on earth we're talking about. So we will briefly define our terms. Then we'll talk about what this actually means for us this year. And then we'll start dreaming big and think about one day, what if we have a big local pagan community how will we be celebrating then but before we begin the autumn equinox mavon uh second harvest hostblot uh those are the names i most commonly hear tossed around and and they all refer essentially to this same thing this moment where we have equal parts day equal parts night and then going forward we are going into the darkness so uh, i thought that we could start off by talking about some of the big spiritual and also the material themes because you know there are both those aspects of it so take it away oh the spiritual things the changing of the weather everything kind of culminating to this big death of the season right everybody feels it mm -hmm. it's this huge coming together that something is lurking behind the shadows and if you are necessarily sensitive to this time of year at all you will also find yourself being very in tune with restless spirits that might be coming mm -hmm. through the veil uh, during this time as we near samine and um you know getting through the fall equinox so my favorite part of the season uh spiritually speaking is that feeling of bringing it all together everything that you've done over the summer all of your accomplishments from spring until now are coming to harvest so you really start to see the benefits of what you've been working on all of your gardening all of your you know extracurricular outside activities you might end up with some more extra things on your to-do list to close out the season, <laughs> but yeah. it's a great time to, in my opinion, reflect on your progress. Oh, a 1,000%. I mean, there is something about it. I always think of it as this is the last big burst and explosion of life before everything starts to go back to sleep. And I love that. Um, it, and maybe it's just because I do like uh, some of those more extremes of the of the energies just because it, it makes me feel alive. And and after summer, summer is not my season <laughs> at all. And I feel very tired. I was I was really trotting along towards the end. I mean, we where I live, we've been in the upper freaking 90s all week. And as we're recording right now, it's 86 degrees. I'm cranky. Uh, this is not okay. Now, fortunately, when this video posts tomorrow, uh, I think the high is, you know, 64 with thunderstorms. Ooh. So I'm feeling pretty stoked about that. Oh, yeah. It's going to be nice. a glorious <laughs> change, just like that. But, I mean, it is it is that feeling of, of stagnation and lackadaisicalness and just waiting for something to happen and trying to get to that next chapter. So when I start feeling those energies moving, I'm like, oh. Thank the gods. I'm I'm alive again. Things are <laughs> no, things are, but I'm alive again. And I start, it, I actually started thinking about the future again at this time of year too. <laughs> yeah, no, I was gonna say that's perfect. And I think that that fits the energy and the tone of the season so well because in addition to looking back at all that you've accomplished, a lot of people do start to feel that sluggishness. They start to feel more connected to the dying off of the leaves, the dying off of the plant life, the dying off of, you know, the bugs in, in particular, especially in my area, will be super happy when the bugs finally die. But, um, you know, that that really gets into people's souls. And 
I think that that's when you see a lot of people really turn inwards to their homes Mm -hmm. and they start prepping and getting ready for, you know, the new meals that they're going to cook, the new types of sweaters they're going to get. And, you know, everybody gets into that pumpkin spice type of vibe. And fuzzy socks. Sorry, go on. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, uh, that goes, that goes right into what's happening in the actual atmosphere. So even people who aren't magically inclined, they don't realize that, you know, they're more in tune to the season than they think they are. Oh, absolutely. And I think you particularly notice this at both the fall equinox, uh, the spring equinox, Um, sometimes during Samhain and Beltane and also during the solstices, this just whenever we have these big movements, people are feeling something. They just cannot help themselves, which just (laughs) further proves that there really is something to to all of that we've been talking about all these years, about the cycles and the coming and going, the ebbing and flowing of energies, which uh, we'll get into that a little bit more for my part. But uh, for those who are not aware and haven't really studied this, I want us to kind of mention briefly uh, some of the deities associated with the equinox and what they're doing. Obviously, in Wicca, we have the lore, which it's either depending on your tradition and what you think, either you think about the death of the god at Lumnasa or at Mavon. For me, I always thought of it uh, during Mavon and the uh, autumnal equinox. I just, I felt that shift more then. I could just sense Agreed. his presence is leading towards that underworld and, you know, the goddess being a little bit more bereft and a widow and all these other things. Uh, but, you know, that is wicked lore. Uh, and and uh, in addition to those, uh, we have a couple others. And since you do the Greco- Roman pantheon more than I do. I thought uh, you could start with them and tell us a little bit about why they're associated with this time of year. I see you you put me on the spot. Um, Unfortunately, (laughs) offhand, I can't come up with any uh, any deities that really strike me as as being a, a patron god or goddess to the actual time of year. But what I will say, in addition to your uh, sentiment, would be that I agree that it feels more uh, shift worthy or Mm -hmm. as if the God is leaving and the goddess is bereaving the loss of of her God during this time of year as as opposed to Lysanda because I feel that that holiday is more in tune with just harvest in general and bringing Mm -hmm. in the last of the crops and things like that where this particular shift in the energies and going back to the deities, the ones who are associated with this time of year are associated with a lot of different energies. So you've got death coming, Mm -hmm. you've got um, the putting to sleep of the different plant life because there's a lot of Mm -hmm. different goddesses and gods out there that deal with specific plant life. Um, that goes Mm -hmm. to sleep during the winter months, then you have things that are coming alive during that time too. So, you know, there's different shifts in the animals that are associated Mm -hmm. with this time of year. I would highly encourage anybody uh, to be a better witch than I and uh, go out there and (laughs) actually actually find the names of these deities and and these pantheons and, and things that are associated with this time of year to become more familiar and and to connect because we were talking before the show and I thought that one of the biggest, most important things to do that specific research for would be to write your rituals. And if Mm -hmm. you're writing a ritual, you're writing a ritual and especially around the equinox, equinox seems to be the best time to do ritual, like actual ritual Um, Mm -hmm. for me. Personally, you guys out there might have a different opinion of that, but For me, a a ritual is better served during the equinox because there is so much energy and you have that perfect balance. So you have the masculine, Mm -hmm. you have the feminine. The masculine is, you know, dying. The the, the feminine is there bereaving. You're going into a next phase. You're expecting this, this harsh winter, all of these things that are yet to come, but you're stuck. I think you hit that on the head too. You're stuck in this position until all this stuff happens. So what do you do? You have to go and and pay homage to those deities. Mm -hmm. You have to go and individually call upon them and, again, bring them into your ritual, celebrate the time of the season, 
celebrate what uh -huh. you're doing and understand what's happening with the balance being what it is, the darkness now starting to slowly overtake the light, now starting to usher you into a period of time where you're going to be focused on conserving energy. You're gonna be focused mm -hmm. on gaining the, the strength to make it through to the spring to be reborn on the other side. That's what I think mm -hmm. you should really be focused on. Um, and of course, mm -hmm. based on your own pantheons, you guys are gonna find that there's so many, I mean, so many gods and goddesses out there. I know that you have a better <laughs> answer than I do for this question. <laughs> well, I mean, we have a lot of options. Uh, for the Greco-Roman, uh, the first thing I thought of was, of course, Hades and Persephone, of her yearly descent into the underworld. And then, you know, the everything stops growing because Demeter is sulking. And, you know, depending on how you view how the relationship between Hades and Persephone came about, you know, was she abducted or did she go willingly? I mean, you have different interpretations with that, but either way, uh, nevertheless, she maybe a little bit of both her husband. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it's hard to say relationships are very complicated, especially with the gods. And of course, what you tell your dude and sometimes what you tell your mother, who's really, really angry. Uh, those are sometimes very different stories as anyone who used to be a young girl can testify to. <laughs> And not uh, that we would be that. able to tell what was in their heads anyways. So, you know, I wouldn't even no. stab a guess. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it's a complicated brain. But I was I was thinking of them because they are that that union of the light and the dark, the life and the death and them having to ebb and flow. And then if we go to the Celtic side, uh, we have uh, the god Mabon, you know, the youthful god and his mother Modron. Uh, and it had during my research last year, it was suggested from certain quarters, not all, but some, uh, that uh, Modron may have also been uh, kind of a cognate for the goddess Rhiannon, and Mabon may have been a cognate for her son Pryderi, because of course these were sons who were taken from their mothers on the night of their births, and there was a period of hardship and cold and seeking after that, and it was when they were restored to their mother, the land itself was also restored. So we have that beautiful cycle that goes in and out. And then for the Norse, I mean, because of the harvest, we could definitely involve uh, Freyr and Freya because they're gods of fertility, the land, uh, sensuality, which this is a pretty sensual time of year. And of course, the closer, you know, as we get into Libra and then we get into Scorpio later in October, I think we feel those energies a lot more, but they are there. Right. Uh, you, could also, you could also definitely call upon uh, Thor and Sif. Uh, because mm -hmm. Thor, he was this agricultural god. And Sif, of course, was this goddess of the land. And uh, during the story in which Loki cut off Sif's hair, which, you know, really pissed off Thor, uh, but her hair was this metaphor for the wheat in the fields, for the crops in the field, for everything that sustains life. And when they got her this wig from the dwarves to replace the hair that was cut, it was sensing this going to be perpetual renewal. The cycle that has been set in place is going to continue to sustain life. And also in the Norse, uh, you know, me personally, I've really been thinking about Balder and Hell. Yeah, uh, because after he died, good. he went right. In, he went right into her realm. And if if uh, Norse mythology is cyclical, as I and others have really sincerely come to believe that it is, well, you know, he upon his death at the solstice, you know, he dies a bit earlier than than other gods do in this. But, you know, by the time he is, he's, uh, the equinox rolls around, I just feel that, you know, the issue of where he's going to be for the next little while has been settled. And then he'll be there, and then he'll be reborn at the winter solstice, and everything will continue cycling around. He is also this god of vitality and life and goodness and light. And then we have Hala, who's a little bit more uh, stern, uh, who is associated with the dark and the death and has this great weighty responsibility. Both of them do. But I see this this interchange of play and interplay of inner Energies. And I feel like there's some kind of teamwork, some kind of cooperation. As I was telling you before we started the yeah. show, I have yeah. very serious questions about the nature of their relationship uh, because Balder does have a has a, a proper wife, uh, Nana, uh, who is also this moon goddess and he with him associated son. That's also a very natural pairing. So I'm thinking, so girls, are you taking turns or Ooh. is it more of a professional relationship with him and hell? I don't know. The lore does not comment. This is pure speculation on my part, but it's just enough to make, make you think. be suspicious. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I yeah. think just a few of the babies that people could could investigate and see if they're wanting to incorporate them in with their own equinox celebrations. I mean, and oh, as well, for I other was... pantheons. 
I haven't looked into them, so I don't really know, but I'm sure that, yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, um, if, if you wanted to break it down to some basics, you could do something as simple as your sun gods and your moon gods, because now you're, you're talking about the balance of night and day and how that is going to change into the second half of the season. And I think a lot of people would put Cerneris on this list as well, the horn god, because he yeah. is the master of masculinity. He is kind of the father figure, the god. So, um, you know, just, just throwing a little bit of that out there too. So if you want to go general, go general, but if you want to get specific, write those rituals, that's, what's going to help you connect more with your, your deity of preference, in my opinion. I love that you brought up this balancing of the, of the night and the day, but also of the masculine and the feminine as well, because, you know, the masculine is associated with all this projective energy, everything that's active, it's going out, it's doing stuff, which is very much the growing part of the year. And now we're moving into that feminine energy. Well, what does feminine energy do? It envelops, it turns inwards, it's much more nurturing. <laughs> and, you know, and I think that's why there's such this instinctive of, I want to make soups and I want to bake bread and I'm putting on the good blankets and I'm giving yes. out my socks and I'm doing all these things. <laughs> we're nurturing, we are literally nesting. Making the household. Ourselves. Right, right. Absolutely. A nesting. That's a perfect word for it. You are. You're getting the kids ready with the clothes. You're putting away the summer stuff. You're putting away all the, your stuff in the yard and you're really buckling down, getting ready for the next thing. And I hate to bring this up, but women are also the bearers of new life. Mm -hmm. So during yeah. this time, it also represents the, in my opinion, the pregnancy of a woman mm -hmm. where you're waiting to bear the child or bear the fruits of your labor in the spring as well. Absolutely. And that's, uh, I can't remember if I mentioned it while we were recording or before, but I was talking about how this is also a time of year when I start thinking about that future because it's also that moment of conception tying in with the pregnancy metaphor. And we're just, it's, it's got to cook over the next few months. It's just yes. got to cook and do what it does. And it will come into fruition at the proper time. So I think we've gone over uh, pretty well for those who aren't really super familiar with paganism or who are new to it, uh, what this is generally all about and what it is we're celebrating. But now I want to get personal for us about what does this particular celebration mean to each of us this year specifically, because each year kind of hits a little bit different. Oh my goodness, every year is always different. And if it's not different, then you should be asking yourself, why am I in the same place? because mm -hmm. it really is about planning and nurturing yourself, your family, your position. What do you want to accomplish over the winter? What needs to be wrapped up from the summer? Learning how to finish chapters, learning how to mm -hmm. go through change. Um, you know, me, myself personally, right now, um, you know that there's a lot of change that's going on in my mm -hmm. life. My kids are getting older. Well, I'm going through this this kind of from mother to crone phase. I know that you guys think I'm a little bit young, but once my kids <laughs> move out of the house, I'm no longer in the mother phase. I will be into the crone phase. They will be in their maiden stage still until they become mothers themselves. But I think that that's also another metaphor of the season. So when you're facing down your own death, not, it's, not, it's not a death, okay? Let's be real. It's just the death of a phase of life. So mm -hmm. you, you think a lot about those things during this time of year. You reflect upon what you want to accomplish for the coming year. And then, you know, put your planning together. Like you said, you, you kind of go piece by piece and plan what you're going to do for the next year. Now, that's all hard work, right? Nobody wants to talk about the hard work that they do. What do we want to talk about? We want to <laughs> talk about the fun stuff that we do. So the super <laughs> fun stuff that we do, you know, bonfires, bonfires are amazingly yes. purifying <laughs> experiences. People don't even realize that, you know, they're all partaking with you, with this ritual that you're having outside with everybody. It's non-denominational. Everybody's together. It's just a celebration of the fire, the changing of the seasons, coming together, gathering with family, um, personally, like you said, going back and thanking your deities for what they've done over the first half of the year and allowing them to rest and maybe just maybe 
remembering the ones that are coming in and give them a little bit of, of love too. And, and just be constant with how you're putting together your family and celebration of your family. I love that. That is so beautiful. Uh, I'm afraid for me this year, I, I'm a little bit more in the, in the downer mode uh, because <laughs> you know, I've never I've never really picked up on the themes of the grief of the goddess in, in times past. I just wasn't I wasn't there. But this year, for a wide variety of reasons, I do find myself experiencing almost the kind of that mourning, uh, you know, the mourning of, you know, the collapsed civilization, as we know it. <laughs> that doesn't mean I've been blackpilled or that I don't think there's hope. It just means that there are things whose whose time has come and passed. And there there is a sense of loss of that. I've been reflecting on relationships that have come and gone uh, because in my life, one of the patterns is that there have been people who have been around me for a season or for a reason. There are very few lifers around me. And, you know, being a woman and since, you know, our whole mode of instincts is like, I must form a community, I must form my tribe. I must have all of these connections everywhere. And uh, for most, and for most me in a lot of ways, a lot of those connections are very temporary. And that's mm -hmm. been a difficult throughout my life to come to terms with. So in a way, I feel like I've been mourning the loss of things that have had their time and gone in a way that I never permitted myself to do before. And also I think it's, it's, I'm also mourning, I don't want to say my life because I don't regret anything about my life, but I am, I am mourning that I am moving into a very, very different phase. I mean, once I turn 40, I'm like, okay, this is the autumn of life. You know, I started letting my hair turn because I'm like, I was raised in a religion in which one of their teachings was, if you're just faithful and do what you say, we say, you know, you'll survive Armageddon and then you'll live forever young and beautiful on a paradise earth. So when you're raised with that kind of messed up programming, if you get away from it, you need to embrace the aging process because you were never taught how to do so. So in a way, I think I am catching up emotionally from all of that mess. And I think it's good. I have started to feel a lot more rebalanced, but it, that is definitely an energy that I'm really, really tuning into this season. And it's it all seems for the best. to be the it season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, and this, this is just something you need to go through. I mean, even our emotions that aren't very fun. I mean, it's not like they're bad or that we're not supposed to have them. You know, we got to right. learn to live with them. Like, like we talked about last week. Uh, but, True. Uh, as far as faith goes, uh, you know, because we covered a lot of the deities you could go into. For me, I think I am really going to lean into Balder and Hell. I'm going to be doing some ritual uh, actually on the equinox. Uh, to show my respect for them for for what they do and uh, I think mostly because I haven't gotten to know them the way I've gotten to know Loki I'm just going to say hello and uh, I would like to learn from you because I think both of you have a great deal to teach about the ebb and flow in life and those are lessons I really need right now not just for my life but also to put into perspective everything that's going on in the world because we have seen the passing of an age and you know the new one beckons and we've got to attend to it. Uh, what yeah. about you? Have, have have you thought about who you might be honoring or are you feeling much more generalized this year? You know, honestly, every year I think it's really, really general for me just for the simple fact that it is so important to encompass the entirety of the masculine, the feminine, the light and the dark and the actual change of the season. So, um, you know, we we spoke about the importance of writing ritual and being specific mm -hmm. in ritual. So whenever, you know, if I sat down to write a ritual, it would be specific to a, de to a deity and I would do the homework on it. Um, mm -hmm. I would put my intent to paper. I would then research who the best person to reach out to would be. Because if you're working yeah. in a realm, then you want to reach out to the master of that realm. That's how you're gonna see the best results. Mm -hmm is if you address the person as if they were standing in front of you. You know, you don't want to say, hey, you over there. You want to say, hey, this specific deity, I'm calling you for this specific purpose. And this is what we're going to celebrate because of you, because of you and, and what you do during this time of the season, because everyone has their own jobs. Everyone participates in the activity of the change altogether, but they do very specific things. So if you're looking for something like, like what you're going through, you're gonna look for a much different deity than something than 
you know, if I wanted to pay homage to the trees on my land okay. for giving us the protection, um, or if we wanted to pay uh, homage to a particular animal that, you know, mm -hmm. is coming to visit us or something like that. So um, this year I will definitely be more generalized. It will be a, a sun moon theme that will carry, mm -hmm. of course, my patron deity, Celine, and, um, you know, a counterpart, sun god. You take your pick. You can name them whatever you want these days, arrows, uh, whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, that that's my thing because I do see a lot of the, the balance of the time. And that's always been the most intriguing thing to me because I used to be a night, night owl. I love when it gets mm -hmm. dark and you can get the fire going <laughs> and it's a little bit cooler. And that's, that's about all I like about fall. After that, uh, <laughs> it loses interest for me very quickly. <laughs> I understand. I mean, you are totally a summer girl. That's and you true. know, summer has to have its fans. Otherwise, it'd be neglected. And then, you know, then we would be in trouble. Uh, but as you were mentioning, kind of um, almost magical correspondences or magical focuses, I do want to touch on that a little bit more just because we do have new witches and we do have people who might be wanting to shake things up a bit. And for me, I find that while I do reference my correspondence books, and you know, if you don't have one, buy one. They are useful. Yes. So I'm, I'm or, not saying don't Google. Use them. Yeah, definitely, definitely Google. You can find your information. Uh, but uh, lately, just because of where I've been at and where my own spiritual needs have been doing, I've been trying to look around what is going on immediately around me, and this includes uh, plants, animals, even minerals, and so forth. And uh, that's a good I, so one. I've been, minerals. I've been watching Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, well, you know, we can't do without our rocks and our crystals. I know. They're shiny and, <laughs> and we love them. Uh, but for the plants, I, you know, the thing that keeps standing out to me, in addition to what few remaining wildflowers we have, is just, I mean, this is just the season of chrysanthemums. They are everywhere. They're at the stores. They're on people's porches. I've been nagging my husband to get me some because, you know, I, I want one last bit of flower before, you know, we go into the, into the sleep of winter. But I just, I... I love everything about them and I feel like they really embody those energies of the seasons, both with their colors and just how they feel. There's something just energetically charged about them. And just, and it, it's that kind of popping little mini explosions. Uh, yeah. I'm a fire sign. I get to like my, my explosions and my fire. That's how it goes. Yes. And with the animals, that's right. <laughs> but the animals, I've been taking a lot of notice of the squirrels uh, because I've noticed they're busy doing squirrel things. Usually when I'm out on my porch, uh, they'll scold me because I'm taking up space they could use for other purposes. And it's just <laughs> annoying to have me there. So but they've been I've been on completely ignored, completely ignored. <laughs> they are busy they're doing their stuff. So I've been thinking about the lessons they have to teach about, you know, focus and preparation. And um, even those insects, so even those insects play oh, a role yeah. in this. They it's did. so funny <laughs> they watching did. them go away at the end of the season and 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 watching this is what this is what really better. gets me they have that scatterbrain mentality where it have you noticed at the end of the season bugs act really wonky i had this grasshopper yeah. that jumped into the wall like six times in a row just kept jumping into the wall and i'm thinking man it's that time of the season you must be really confused <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear they act like they've been drinking. That's how they act at the yeah. end of the season. And it is it's the most glorious feeling, especially when you get your first frost of the year and you just know they died. They're All gone. but the strongest have died, and I can be outside in peace from now on. And you know, I'm not quite noticing any of the migratory birds moving around, but I know that's coming soon. So I've been thinking about them. And um and I've also been thinking a little bit about, you know, kind of farm animals and the value that they provide for us and how allowing them to fulfill their natural purpose to sustain us, how meaningful that really is, both for us and for them. You know, I don't buy into this crap that it's so mean that we eat the animals. Oh, just, oh my God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only everything eats for life. You have to consume to live. Everything does. Except everything it. eats. <laughs> everything eats it's and not. everything is eaten by something. Eventually, depending on how you want to be laid to rest, you will also be eaten by something or you will be ashes yeah. to ashes and returned to something that will be eaten by something else. So. 
Well, if you think about it, the plants with their roots, they eat the remains and of, you know, they eat what's in the dirt. And part of that is the physical remains of animals and of us. So, I mean, it, you, we've all, we all get it coming and going. So, I mean, it actually yes. is. It actually the circle is fair of life. if you think about it properly. <laughs> it is. Oh, but with my, my crystals, I lately I have been all about the jasper for its very grounding and calming energies. I've loved my citrine, especially my paler citrines representing you know, that sun and star. Yes, topaz. And I also love my carnelian because it has that really warm orange color. This is the only time of year I like the color orange. Yes. And of course, I'm starting <laughs> to get into my obsidians because obsidians are wonderful. Just have sunstone. around uh, just for uh, sunstone. Yeah. But some of these are also really good for home protection as well. And as you say, I mean, we are getting into the season of the oogie boogies moving around. And, <laughs> yes. you know, it's, uh, you, you don't want anything that with uh, malicious intent you know, deciding like, I'm going to live here now. No, no, we, we have yeah. to set some boundaries. <laughs> and with so much um, energy, this is important though, with so much energy that you're working, don't be afraid if you do happen to attract more energy than you thought you did. And that can come in many different forms. That means you could be feeling feelings from other people. You could have an mm -hmm. entity or a spirit stop by and hang out with you for a little bit. This could be intrusive energy from your neighbors coming over too. So while you're raising the energy, make sure that you do put up your proper barriers and that you're paying attention to cast your circle properly and that you're protecting yourself yeah. and your energies during this time of year. Oh, most definitely. Now, the, the good side of all of this energy that's floating around is that uh, sometimes our gods are talking a little bit more loudly to us, which can be, yeah. you know, nice. But depending on what they have to say, I can be like, oh. So I don't want to hear that. I had you drowned out before, but uh, apparently we're talking now and, you know, fine. I remember last year, uh, I'm coming up on my, kind. Of, well, I guess it is the one year anniversary with me and Loki, when he just it, it made himself known in my life and said, so I'm in charge now. And like, well, uh, uh, Okay. okay. <laughs> I guess there, there's not there's not a whole I don't think I want to object. That wasn't a question, was it? I did. <laughs> no, it was, it was a statement. It was a very much it was a pretty much traditional Viking era. I tossed you over my shoulder, I carried you across the sea. You live here now, this is how it's gonna be. And I'm just okay, fine, whatever. You're lucky, <laughs> so I guess it's okay. <laughs> but you I could mean, do worse. You could I mean, do worse. Oh, God, yes, I could do worse. I've actually got off very lucky and very lightly. But this is the time of year when he got active, when he got very vocal, when I got a list of chores that I'm still working through. I've made progress, but I am still working through them. So, you know, I, I think it's because of all of that thinning of the veil. And we should, and even though we're not always given jobs that, uh, you know, we think are particularly fun, I mean, this is a good moment for it because we do have that heightened energy. We can attack these things, even the, the not fun stuff with a lot more uh, wherewithal than we would at other, other times of the year. Well, so, then we're dwelling that upon that energy from, yeah. from all of yeah. this change yeah, and everything that's well. moving. Yeah, it's like a well. That's a great way to put it, is that anybody can come and bucket it up. And that's great for us, but it's also effective to us because other people will draw from that well as well. That's yeah, and a lot of times, I mean, well, there's a lot of people who don't realize it. I mean, how many people have, you know, above average empathic capabilities that are latent that they've never learned how to use, don't really understand, but they're instinctively picking up on things. I mean, it's, and it's probably a lot. <laughs> yeah. And, because, and also very unconsciously because they don't understand what they are or how it works. You know, and I don't say that to say anything against them, but just it happens. So, you know, we got to be aware. But uh, moving on to fun stuff, have you decided how your how you are going to celebrate this year? The specifics oh, how? Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, I want to do a bonfire thing. Like, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I'm a fire sign. It is in my body. I just absolutely feel this connection to the element of fire. And I think that fire is a great element for this time of year because fire has a way of destroying things, but in a way that it is most helpful to the rebirth of those things. Like if you set your lawn on fire down here, apparently that's really big in Georgia. You, you light your, your uh, crop area on fire and it mm -hmm. actually enriches the soil again so that the next time that you plant in the spring 
all the nutrients, all of that good stuff is actually put back into the soil. So I, I know that I can't light my yard on fire because I worked so hard to get my grass grown this year. <laughs> but I have a very nice big burn pit in the back. And um, it's, it's time to do, like you said, move into the next chapter of my life. And I think the best way to symbolize that is to burn away what was not needed of the year that's passed and create a conscious environment where I'm looking more towards the future rather than focusing on what has already happened. I hear you. For me, I'm planning a sunrise and a sunset uh, ceremony. Uh, I want to I want to greet the sun and I want to farewell it. And I just, I want to touch those energies because they're always strongest when they're at that in-between point. And I just, I want to get that full effect. I want to make sure that Balder and Hell hear me and I want them to, I want them to feel the full force of my energy. So it's, there's no disguising of the purpose for which I am approaching them and what I'm hoping to, to learn it. And honestly, what I'm hoping to, to give and in respect and in honor and tribute uh, for any kind of guidance they they happen to show my way. I mean, obviously they're not going to take the time and trouble with me that Loki does because it's a different relationship. You never but, know. You know uh, well, that's true, but I, I don't know. He's he's kind of territorial, so <laughs> <laughs> just a smidge. <laughs> I can't imagine why. Uh, but <clears throat> but uh, it just because even though that guidance from them will be different, I want them to say I am open to it and I respect it and I want to. I want to repay it in, in service of some kind. I want to do some good uh, that reflects honorably on both of you and shows respect for uh, what you really do in the world. I just, I feel this real need that there needs to be this equal respect for life and for death and also for seeing the final consequences of actions. And uh, that really gets me into the next thing that I wanted to touch on is that there are some themes that we both kind of referenced a little bit about the equinox that are hitting really hard this year. And for me, it's all about seeing the full fruition of something. I feel like so many things are coming to a head in our civilization and personal lives and in relationships. I just feel like this, okay, you are now seeing what kind of seeds you really planted. This is the nature of what you cultivated for good, ill, in between both, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And you need to look at it and real and think a little bit more carefully about what seeds you're going to be planting the next time around. And I've actually gotten to some kind of circular conversations lately because there were people who did not realize that the seed of their ideas consistently resulted in bad results. And I said, you are talking about replanting the same plant and you're going to have the same sad same story result. every single time. I mean, if I plant poison ivy, poison ivy will grow. grow. I mean, you can't complain that it didn't turn into a rose bush. Rose. That is not, it did, it did not have the capability of doing that. So for me, it's, it's really, it's accepting that, that full force of consequences, which I think is pretty, pretty important. That's a great, great point. I was going to say, um, having the right expectations, I think is mm -hmm. the best way to put it is that again, yeah, you can look back and you can say, yeah, I did all these great things, but are you focusing on the things you didn't do so well? And that's yeah. another thing that goes back into, like you said, uh, revamping, reincarnation, re rebirth in, in the spring and being hit with that reality that not everything is as great as you think it is. You didn't mm -hmm. do everything right this year. And it's hard for people to hit this part of the year because they do get hit with those realizations that, yeah, I did X, Y, and Z good, but ABC wasn't really up to snuff or that was a repetitive <laughs> pattern. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's an excellent point that you really need to take the good with the bad. So that's another kind of uh, way of looking at the time of season. So if you want to say, all right, now I want to balance out what I did good what I didn't do so well and figure out, okay, well, since I do this well, I don't really have to focus so much on it. Not saying that you don't have to focus on it at all, but mm -hmm. you know your areas in which you need to improve. Oh, definitely. And I think that there is, I'm going to say something nice about Mercury retrograde. Everyone oh. take a deep breath and take a sip of your tea. Uh, but one thing that I am glad that we are in the midst of a Mercury retrograde and specifically for this particular holiday, it's because retrogrades have a way of bringing up issues that we have not satisfactorily resolved. 
and it brings all of that baggage to the forefront. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, have you ever stuffed a closet full of stuff right before company? And then you forget that the closet is full and then you open it and then it's like, oh, problems everywhere. (laughs) Uh, That's that's what the retrogrades do. And uh, no one does it better than Mercury, as we can all currently attest to. Uh, but it's in a way this is this is a blessing in disguise because it is bringing these things to our conscious attention and it's saying you need to tie up this loose end you need to bring this to some kind of conclusion you need to change your approach because ignoring it or doing the same old same old it's not getting the job done so if you don't want if you don't want to go through this through the next retrograde cycle coming in a few months because i think mercury goes into retrograde three to four times a year if I yeah, it's properly. pretty often. <laughs> yeah, this, this will occur again, and uh, we'll just keep uh, bringing this up and making it worse until you deal with it. So this is a good time for us to just uh, contemplate and uh, actually confront our issues. That's you know, something we haven't touched on yet, and, and that is the impact of the planets and the stars and the alignments of the, uh, the constellations as we move into this time of year as well. Now, I'm not the best at astrology, and it's something that I do need to work on a little bit more, but I think that a lot of people forget how much influence the planetary alignments have on everybody. So this is going Mm -hmm. to influence your relationships at home, your relationships professionally, your relationships with just the person in the grocery store, whoever you come in contact with on a daily basis, and it will also influence how you interact with your environment, your because mm-hmm. Mercury retrograde, we're talking about your technology, how you talk to mm-hmm. your kids, how you communicate with your husband, um, all these different things come into play. So, you know, like you said, even though it's wreaking havoc, it's doing so with a purpose because mm-hmm. it is that time of year to reflect and to try to plant the better seeds come next year. So. I think that that's a huge influence is where the stars align, how the planets are coming Mm -hmm. in. And for us in the Northern Hemisphere, we're coming into a whole new constellation set here. So you're going to see a whole change in your skies. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, we don't pay nearly enough attention to that. And honestly, we're not grateful for it. Uh, We have forgotten how to be grateful for the rewards that hardship ultimately brings. And we need to come to terms with that because we we have this sickening saccharine. Everything has to be wonderful all the time. And if it isn't, somehow you failed or or you need to change yourself in this and that. Like, no, no. (laughs) That leads to really unbalanced people. I mean, Uh, The more we talk about these things, the more I think there's no wonder that we have such a mental health crisis in our country. And honestly, around the world, it's because people have been fed a lot of this new age bullshit. Yes, yes, that is exactly what it is. is. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's one of my uh, one of my uh, resolutions for this year's equinox of of uh, of just calling things flat out what they are and not giving people. Not, not allowing people to ignore That's why the you reality met of me. It is my presence. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there may have been a bad influence that made me worse than I already was. So um, Push, do it. It's really all <laughs> I'll take <laughs> it. I, mean, I will need, take it. We need to we need to embrace that kind of emotional balance. We need to understand that we cannot have the good if we are not also confronting the bad. The bad. Yeah. So, yeah, which is pretty heavy stuff to, to talk about and think about. But, I mean, this is we're supposed to be gaining wisdom throughout every season and every year. And uh, and that brings Who's me to my next thing. Who's the best teacher? Wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the experience in the school of hard knocks. That's uh, what right. What other wisdom do you think that uh, we're taking into the, the winter season, which is much closer Ooh. than what we what it feels like today? But I don't know. What, what wisdom from this past year? So I think that a lot of, you know, broad concepts for the year, not only uh, reflect back on on personal goals and personal uh, achievements throughout the year and and things that you want to improve on and things like that, but for like an overarching theme for society, I think we're realizing what can we live without is is yeah. really the hard thing for us to learn and think about this year because with inflation going up a lot of families had to make sacrifices and this is the first mm-hmm. time in their lives they had to make sacrifices so now coming into the winter months where they know gas is going to be more 
the food that they want to prepare is going to be more. The clothes that they need to keep their family warm is going to be more. I think a lot of people are thinking differently about their consumerism, about the way that they're raising their children, about what yeah. they're getting out of their lives. And I feel that society on whole has taken a notice of this. I don't know. Have you felt any of that in the atmosphere? I, I have. I, I do think that people are at least skirting around the edges of the question of what actually makes me happy, what is right. actually important in life. And uh, they may be coming to some different conclusions. Another thing that I'm feeling that I, I want to confirm that it's actually in the ether and not just me projecting what's going on with myself. I think I am feeling people solidify in a certain way. Uh, for, for the past uh, two and a half years, I felt like everything was in flux. Nothing was off the table, that people were going every which way, you know, like running around like the proverbial chicken with its head cut off. That's where <laughs> I felt like people were at. But True. over the past couple of weeks, I have just felt like people are starting to kind of oscillate and starting to sink their feet into where they're going to be. And I'm not sure if that's just me because I felt like that's the journey I've been on over the past year of of the coming to this realization that in, at the end of the day, I'm not going to be a generalist when mm -hmm. it comes to, to being a witch and being and working my magic. Uh, I do have a, I have a, a speciality that I am growing into. And I want to stress that for newcomers growing into it. I was not born into it. I am growing into it. OK, rant over. But also, uh, I also came to the realization that I do have a spiritual home. And I was yes. uh, doing a little bit of bit of research uh, last night because uh, so much of my ancestry on my mom is this very Germanic, Prussian German kind of ancestry. On my father's side, it's a lot of Anglo-Saxon English uh, mixed with a little bit of Celt here and there. Because, you know, they were swapping DNA back in the day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as, as, as different groups do. But then I got to thinking, okay, well, I don't, I didn't really know where Prussia, Germany is or where it used to be because it was no longer a political entity. And I thought, well, where, where exactly in Germany did the Angles and Saxons came from? And it all came from this larger area that at one time was Prussia. And that's where the Anglo-Saxons were. And I'm like, okay, so this is the reason why I'm so drawn to these Norse, Germanic, Anglo-Saxon gods. It's because yes, I am that's them. Where you I, are. I am their people. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is, by far the vast majority of my DNA, they were they were the gods that my people built a civilization around. And I yes. realized, okay, I, I actually am going to have a sense of belonging, which that was a new thought for me. That has not been a thing in my life before. Oh gosh, and there was a third thing. What was it? Um, but just, I think it, it does come back to this whole thing of I'm, I'm not a Swiss army knife. Not spiritually, right. not in my life. There are things I'm good at. There are things I'm not good at. And that's, and in some ways, that is just the way the, the die was cast. And that's okay. And I have oh, something yeah. to offer, you know. I mean, being more of that generalist, I am all things to all people, like the, the Christians would quote their Apostle Paul saying, that's a very rare thing. That's a rare, special person. I think you're much more in that category than I am. And it's yes. amazing to watch. And I'm like, oh, my God, look, there's Georgia. And she's doing stuff that there's not the slightest chance I could possibly do. But we're serving <laughs> different functions and coming to have an appreciation for those different functions. That has been very important to me this year, as has realizing that some people are going to make really horrible, costly choices. And we're going to have to let them go on their merry way with that. Accepting yeah, that, you know, that is, that's been something. It's, it's great that you said that because I think that that lets new witches and new pagans also understand that, yeah, you can be generalized in a way. So the way I classify my general, generalizations is I find things that make sense. So if they mm -hmm. mesh together, everything makes more sense. And I'm a very logical person linear logical person i need a b and c to fit in this box because if it doesn't we have a problem if if b's up here and mm -hmm. c's down here i'm freaking out i gotta figure out how these two points meet together but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's nothing to being a specified practitioner because like you said mm -hmm. you feel that brotherhood you feel those ties mm -hmm. that connection 
you feel that that family feeling that that you need <laughs> to be confident and comfortable and fulfill your purpose I think was the best way that you described it there is that you know what your to-do list your honey-do list is and honey-do <laughs> this means honey-do this so whatever your deities are saying to you it is very personal and you do need to heed that on a personal level don't look at other people and what they're doing yeah. be very focused on yourself and how it all makes sense to you. Because once you put those puzzle pieces together, whichever puzzle you pick to assemble, it's going to put that picture into perspective in the long run. You're going to have the overarching, oh my God, moment. And it may not be in a year. It may not be in two years, mm -hmm. but it, it will come. It will come. Everything you're saying is is knitting together so beautifully, and I'm so glad you you brought that up about not comparing uh, comparing what you know your deity is having you do compared to what that same deity is having to do with someone else. That's something I learned very early on with Loki is that he is coming into people's lives for very different reasons to deal with very different issues, and it's all highly individualized. And, you know, you would think that I would be really, you know, in tune with other channels that do a lot of Loki content or people who talk about their experiences with them. Uh, I have stopped that. Yeah, you know, and, and he gave me kind of an edge early on. He said, you know, my relationship with them is not going to have anything to do with my relationship with you. And also, you know, their perceptions of him, you know, whether it's accurate or inaccurate, you know, that's really between them and him. And I'm not saying he actually used the phrase, well, it's not really your business, but that it's it's not really my business. <laughs> and, and that's okay. You got you that. Have, it's okay Clear. to have boundaries. Yeah, I mean, you have to have these boundaries because if you get so distracted of, of you know, am I conforming with this whole other group, you're going to miss the entire point of what your your deity is trying to teach you. And, and if we're not being taught, then what on earth are we doing? <laughs> what are we up to? <laughs> I'd love to know if, if if anybody out there has found themselves on a path where they're just casting spells, doing ritual, they don't know why they're doing it, they follow the group, um, maybe you're with a coven, please reach out and tell us what this life is like, because I'll tell you, for full oh, shoot, goodness gracious, it's been over 15 years already, and I still don't have a good answer, so somebody please tell me what that life is about, because I can't live it. Yeah. Well, what are what are you getting out of it? If you could define that in terms we could understand, uh, I mean, hell, that would be great. No, you would build. You would be. You would be a bridge between solitary witches and covenanted witches. Coven witches. And maybe, yes. Yes. Maybe. Maybe we could uh, form a bridge of communication and have more productive conversations. If you could do that, that'd be pretty badass. But we're we're looking oh. for you. <laughs> But uh, speaking of things that exist uh, in the dream world, at least at this particular stage, what about pagan community dreams? Because I, yeah. I don't know about you, but I've always kind of had it in my head of if only there were other pagans around me, you know, who we, you know, had some common ground and we liked each other's company. What would it be like to come together for these celebrations? So I thought we could dream a little bit, you know, leave yeah. it on the high note about um you know, let's say, you know, just and specifically for the equinox, where would you want, what, what is your ideal setting for that? Goodness, I have, to take, together. I have to take your favorite place and say Stonehenge would be like the ultimate <laughs> place to go and have a big Wiccan bonfire. Like I said, I'm on this bonfire yeah. trip. So I'm thinking, where's the biggest open field where I can shove the most people and have a big old fire? <laughs> like old school, I'm talking... You remember when you went to high school and they had the bonfires before the pep rallies and the homecoming games? I mean, like ginormous. I want like Burning Man size fire and just, right, just people that are happy. They're, they're dancing. They're exchanging information. They're, they're living the hippie culture, not the ideologue of the hippies, mm -hmm. but the hippie culture. I know that uh, one of the members and I were talking about this in the mm -hmm. Discord server, that there's a difference between what the hippies idealize and how they lived. The way that they yeah. lived was so awesome, in my opinion, you know, with the actual physical sharing, the actual, you know, caring about the lands that they were on and then 
getting dirty and, you know, using the <laughs> rainwater to clean off and things like that. That's the hippie culture that I kind of want to adopt. And especially around this time of year, it's always like, man, I just want to get naked and run around the field next to the fire. <laughs> That's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm slightly more inhibited. I don't want to be around naked people unless I have been previously prepared that that's going to occur. Uh, no, not to throw shade on anyone, but uh, You're not, prepared. Uh, not everyone <laughs> is equally beautiful. I just, I, I have a lot of British ancestry. I need to be prepared that we're going to have naked people running around. That's all I'm saying. Uh, my ideal setting is kind of similar to yours. I do see kind of this big clearing of an open field and this massive bonfire, but I, I just, I want to have that field be in a circle and I want it to be surrounded by the forest. I want to, us to have to walk through the forest and then come to this clearing and it just be us and the stars and the gods and the fire. Oh, oh yeah. That would be fun. From sun up till sundown. Oh, that would be the best. That would be the best. <laughs> And that goes to my next thing. What kind of rituals would you want to have? Because I would, what I'm envisioning is I would want to do a great big release ritual of, you know, we know what we've brought forth and it's time to let go any baggage or concerns we had about that to help us, to help us all kind of move on with it. That's what I'm envisioning. But what would you want to do? Um, I'm sorry. I'm getting eaten alive by bugs out here all of a sudden. But no, that, oh, that's perfect. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. Bugs. <laughs> I know we we're because because we were talking bad about them. They're like, oh yeah, let's get you now. Let's go over here and on your neck and stuff. But um, the releasing ritual. Um, I think planning. You know, just just vocalizing your plans out loud. There's something to be said about contemplating in your head and then manifesting that to words because it goes yeah. from being just an idea, then you say it out loud, and then you're like, why am I not doing it? So it's kind of that ebb and flow into action. And, um, you know, I think that what you're thankful for, I know we're going yeah. into the Thanksgiving season. So it's, you know, it feels a little bit early to be thankful, but I was a Thanksgiving baby. So I always find myself on that, that thankful trip where I just am like, I have to thank everything for everything. I want to thank the sun for rising every day. I want to thank the moon for being in the sky and providing light when the sun's not around. I want to thank the trees because they protect my house. They protect my family. They're so beautiful to look at when it rains. It just creates a vibe. Like I want to talk to the animals because they do their thing. And even these little annoying bugs that are biting me, <laughs> they have their place in the world. They have their place. And, and I'm thankful that they remind me I'm just too sweet. They can't resist. <laughs> I love We're going to go with that. that. Is beautiful. Both, both <laughs> the release and the thankfulness, that is a beautiful, and that is something that I could see even be being woven together or, or if, you know, we're deep into, you know, my daydream world. If we had a period of time where that we could make it a real festival, I mean, we yes. could have a certain day for that release, a certain day for that thankfulness, a certain day where, you know, you're kind of stating publicly in front of your community, this is what I want to do. And I want all of you to bear witness to this, you know, because right. that, that really does kind of hold you accountable. You're like, okay, if oh, I yeah. follow through now, people, people are going to know <laughs> they this. Know. They know. They know. And I was thinking if we ever had a community where we could have other fun activities, I was thinking, you know, maybe that, you know, because I, paganism has always been, you know, family oriented. So I think there needs to be some fun stuff for the kids to do, even if it's not necessarily spiritual in nature for them. You know, maybe, you know, like we're going to go through the woods and we're going to see what we can see, or we're going to go by the pond over here and we're going to see if we can catch frogs. I mean, whatever it is, just to get them involved in this more outdoor life, let them feel the energies, even if they're too young to understand what that is. And I mean, um, I mean, I don't, I don't know, because I am putting you on the spot, and I'm sorry. I, I do that at least once an episode. Back <laughs> uh, but, you know, can, uh, just off the top of your head, can you think of other fun activities, whether for kids or for older people or just kind of in general that we might kind of want to have around all of this? You know, we were Any in our ideal world. Anybody with small kids, leaf collecting activities, um, anything like a scavenger hunt through the forest, if you send them out there to look for different sticks, different, you know, tree parts. And then you could turn it into an educational thing. So they go out and they collect five leaves. And then you go and you um, look up what those leaves are and then find out oh, the yes. spiritual aspects of the trees and what they provide for the forest and what could they be used for in magic or ritual or anything like that. Um, there's a pine cone, and this is just 
super easy. Every kid does it in preschool. This pine cone exercise where you just take a pine cone and you put peanut butter all, all over it, tie a string to it, and then dip it in bird seed. And then you can hang the pine cone out outside and it attracts all the birds. So then you could sit in the house and watch the birds come and eat the bird seed off of the of the pine cone. And um, you know, they could partake in, in, in the collecting of wood for the fire and you mm-hmm. could explain to them what you're doing while you collect the wood and then go through the burning process. You can explain to them about the element of fire and its importance in, you know, magic and ritual and what the time of the season is. So get creative with what you already know. You have all the tools that you need, just use them. Yeah, and also I was thinking, what about bringing back the custom of fire, of uh, storytelling around the fire? Yes. Uh, you know, and, and this could be especially helpful for, for kids and for new pagans if, you know, if they said, okay, you know, so we're taking this myth and we're gonna, we're gonna be ridiculous. We're gonna put on a little show and like, and then this warrior fought that warrior. Puppet and shows. This and this and, they can make I mean, puppet yeah. shows. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, cut I, out little I mean, outlines and construction paper and tape, tape them the popsicle sticks and stuff. It's, it's, you can do all different kinds of stuff. It's great. And that sort of oh, yeah. thing you can and use to teach the fairy tales. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so much we could do. If only we, you know, we had a place and had a group. I together. know, but we're working on that. We are, we are planting <laughs> the seeds. And of course, you know, it wouldn't be a, a celebration or a festival without some foods and drinks. Food. And since where we are <laughs> in America, I mean, I think we, we do have some culinary tradition to draw upon that may not have been traditional for our ancestors, but it's certainly traditional for us. I was thinking about, you know, barbecue is always a big thing. Hog roast when I was growing up, that was just the pinnacle of the year is someone we knew actually through a hog roast. And I mean, you got together with everybody. You Everyone. Knew, and people, they, they brought dishes and they brought the different kinds of drinks. The parallels are uncanny. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's almost as if we unconsciously have perpetuated this because it's important. Um, uh, but I, and of course, I don't know much about, you know, campsite baking of any kind, but anything that, you know, draws upon the grains, because even though grains aren't as big of a thing, you know, for the equinoxes, what they were for Lunasa, I mean, it's still a part of it. I mean, just... I don't know, just kind of starting to create our own homegrown traditions that honor our ancestral past, but also are rooting into the land where we're at. I mean, what's one thing that you would really love to see at a gathering like this as far as food and drink goes? Um, I think that now's the perfect time to use the last fresh ingredients of the season. So you go back to your harvest and, um, you know, like a lot of people do tomatoes. You and I both did tomatoes. So I think like chili would be a great dish to have yeah. at this time of year. Uh, you're kind of a little bit cooler. You're waiting until the sun goes down to eat. Um, it's a hearty meal. It's got the tomatoes that you harvested from the garden. Maybe you got your own beans in there too. The only thing really is is the uh, beef from hopefully local cattle. But I know that a lot of us aren't that lucky, myself included. Um, so it is store-bought. But it works just the same. It's still... You can pay homage to all of these things, your harvest, your cattle, uh, sac- not sacrifice, but what they gave to you in order for you to survive um, and, and all of those things. So I'm, I'm a big chili fan around this time of year. I'd say chili for everybody. <laughs> oh, that would be absolutely amazing. Any kind of chili, uh, a really good beef vegetable stew, uh, chicken yeah, noodle, that's a chicken noodle, if you could, one. If you could, mm. if you could swing it. Um, you know, I just, have chicken in the freezer I, right now. <laughs> see, there you go. And also, you know, for drink, I mean, obviously this would be for the adults who don't have issues with alcohol. But, uh, you know, this time of year is also a, a year time of year when people in the vineyards start picking the grapes. And then they start, you know, you know, there are certain wines that they lay down that are finally matured and they're ready to drink. Having that yes. being part of you know, the honoring and the acknowledgement of the season. You know, if we have any Bacchus fans out there uh, the, or Dionysus, I mean, this would this would be a way to to incorporate him. And boy, he knows how to make a party go from what I hear. So yeah, oh yeah. That, but but I don't forget your grain about, alcohol yeah. moonshine. It's always a great addition to any party. Just throwing that one out there. 
Absolutely. And what is more American than moonshine? I mean, that's not okay. best. <laughs> but I'm also thinking about music. I want to I wanna collect more of our creative pagan brothers and sisters around us, people who have instruments that are transportable, having them bring that, you know, having decorations, maybe putting up a tent and making it pretty, people coming and showing off their crafts or even trading their crafts or, or someone who, you know, maybe they make a lot of corn dollies and, you know, in exchange for some sort of trade, you know, you can use that as part of your own sacrifices for, for rituals and everything else i'm just seeing so much potential for fun stuff oh yeah <laughs> everyone please come with me on this journey we've got to make this happen let's make this happen once before i die uh, so, just I mean, one just time please. one time for the people <laughs> <laughs> Well, because I mean, this is part of bringing paganism back, and and I've been trying to really stress that with 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 everyone. Really, if you know, we don't if we don't come out of the shadows now, there could there may not be another opportunity for another thousand years. I don't think that you know the people in the 20th century who came out of the progress the the closet, who brought these ideas forth, even if their understanding was admittedly imperfect. Let's face it our understanding is imperfect too, but they faced it. They faced actual persecution. They faced court cases. They faced hardships. They did it all. We are bearing their legacy. Let's take it up to the next level. Let's start having our gatherings. Let's start forming these communities face to face and, and actually enjoying it because I don't know about you, but I mean, it, I think that uh, non-pagans around us would have a very different view of us if we said, oh yeah, we're celebrating the equinox, it's about balance and the light and the dark and the, appreciating the harvest and all this and that. We're going to have a bonfire, we're going to have good food, we're going to have good music, the kids are playing in the forest and doing all this stuff. I think that would really take a lot of prejudice away, they're like, oh, they're normal people. You know, they're, yes. they're doing things that we identify with that we do just for different reasons. And for I, different I, reasons. I really see yeah, I mean, sunlight is the ultimate disinfectant, and I think we could we could do so much in our own ways just to to bring us m just a little bit further. And that way, by the time you know your kids, grandkids come around, you know, maybe maybe paganism is just kind of normal. There, it's yeah, just one of those, no, that's it's just, awesome. It's, thing, it's, it's part of it's part of the fabric. <laughs> and 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 to go back to what you said and touch upon that real quick about not knowing our past. There's a reason for that. It was because it was handed down word of mouth through the families. And again, this is a testament to how, fall, how far we've fallen in society where we don't hand those traditions down anymore. So I firmly believe that if um, paganism was projected as much as Christianity was, if they knew as much about our faith and why we do the things that we do as we know about them and the reasons why they do the things that they do, that it would be a more equitable relationship between the two of us. We wouldn't be fighting so much over the spotlight. It would just be like, oh, you're a Catholic? Cool, I'm a, I'm a pagan or I'm a witch or I'm a this or whatever you are. It, it wouldn't be the issue that it is. Yeah. And so much, so much of it has to do with how we present ourselves. I mean, you and I, we present ourselves as normal people. You know, we don't we don't make videos in our ritual wear. You know, we don't. You know, I think I'm I get kicked off of YouTube. Like, <laughs> right. I mean, I don't or get you know, more followers honest. if you're into that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, we're not we're not presenting ourselves in this bizarre alien way. And even though my eyeliner is a bit heavy today, it's still within the bounds of what's customary for women. I mean, we're not saying, oh, we're different and we're doing this to be shocking and rebellious and all this other stuff. No, it's just we're normal people. We have a very sincere faith, and I honestly think what inroads we have made with the Christian community, it is owing to that sense of normalcy, that sense of I can recognize you as a human being, not as someone who's trying to disrupt my civilization because or anti I think a me. lot of, yeah, not anti me. I mean, if anything, I'm indifferent towards you. Whatever controversies you got to going on within the Christian church, I don't really see don't how that has time. anything to do with me. <laughs> you know, I, I, my, my brain is a little full. I don't have my, I don't have enough brain space for all the stuff that goes in within paganism. There's a reason why my focus has contracted. So, I mean, what does that tell you? <laughs> 
Well, I mean, if they just see that, you know, that there is something that they can connect with, something that isn't trying to hurt them, because I think they feel so attacked right now, thanks to the woke and thanks to all the political stuff that's going on. I think a lot of them, all of their hostility is immediately owing to, I just don't want to be around people who are hostile towards me, which I right. understand. I feel Neither that myself. Do I. I don't want to be around people who are hostile towards me. So I think there is an opportunity to build a bridge, at yeah, least over the definitely. long term. Definitely. <laughs> well, it starts with <laughs> education. It starts yeah, with education, exactly. and then participation. Which is why we put our faces there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's it. That's what we're doing. We're building the community. We're having the conversations, and we're not coming at it from. I mean, yeah, we're talking about religion here. Let's not get it twisted. But anybody right. can listen to this and be like, "Oh, that's not devil worship. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Oh." That's completely sane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, these people, they love life. They enjoy it. They're just very accepting of, of uh, just the whole cycle of life. And I think that's a lot less threatening. Yes. Well, that is, that is all the stuff I wrote down for us to talk all about. The stuff? Is there anything else you want to end up on? We, we did all the stuff. We did all the stuff. That's awesome. No, I didn't think we were going to get to it all. The, uh, the outline was a little bit daunting, but I, I think that... This was extremely helpful uh, to me because, again, like you said, uh, just vocalizing things is a great feeling. It's a part of the process of the time of the season. And even though we, I mean, you hit the deities a little bit harder than I did, and I do feel a little bit ashamed. So I'm sorry I didn't come to the table with oh. more in that per particular area. But there's no um, shame in this room. <laughs> we we really we really encourage everybody to go out and, and find somebody not not necessarily that, that fits to you, but calls to you. Because if you go out and you find a deity that fits you, you're not going to make progress. You're not going to move. And like Loki did for Brigantia, if you reach out and just say, I'm open to this experience, somebody new will call to you. And you'll be like, oh my goodness, I didn't even think to look in your direction. But there's a reason why you called to me. Absolutely. And you don't know what kind of adventure might be in store for you. And we all True. need a little bit of an adventure, I think. That's right. Oh, well, oh, I think that is it. Thank you for joining me on this. I love our conversations. I'm so glad we're getting back into the flow of things. It means the world me to too. me. And me uh, everyone who's watching, come see us on Gilded. That is where we live. That's where we do our stuff. That's where we have links. That's where we have our other content creators. I want to give a shout out to... Uh, Sigrun Gregerson of the Pagan Prepper and Universal Temple. She's getting back into doing some videos. Uh, she had a few family health issues. Uh, apparently, they all decide to get sick at once, but she's feeling better now. She's getting back in her groove. She's making her videos. We have uh, Gandalf Freyason. Of, uh, he's an elder of the um, True North Yoro Faith. They have an, a newsletter that comes out just about monthly, it feels like. Uh, that he yeah. just put out his autumn act. So come see him. He's very happy uh, to uh, to send that to you if that's something you'd be interested in. He's also very involved in the education work. He likes to talk with people and uh, he has a lot of experience that uh, honestly I'm very, very glad to have in the group. Uh, we also have our nocturnal pagan. Uh, he's had a schedule change, so he's not putting out the content like he used to, but he's glorious to talk to. He does have content for you to contemplate. And of course, we also have Druid Fox of the Druid's Den blog and a children's author. So we have yeah. content creators. We have people doing outreach. I would love to network with even more of our pagan brethren who do this, especially people who are in the arts, uh, people, uh, honestly, anything that you do, Anyone. whatever it is you have to bring <laughs> to the table, we are wanting to build a full bodied community on Gilded, at least as much as what we can. And hopefully that lays the groundwork for uh, better things into the future. So come see us, please. And go visit Georgia on her channel, Wiccan Conservative. Where's uh, where's all the uh, versions of your channel? Where can they find you? You can find me on YouTube or Rumble. You're choosing. I syndicate. So if you're looking for a particular video on YouTube that you heard about, or maybe somebody sent you and it's not there, I guarantee it's probably on Rumble. I did a little bit of the Podbean audio podcast. If you guys are into that and you happen to check it out and I get some actual people over there, I'll put more content on the audio only. So there is a Podbean, there's a Rumble, there's a YouTube. You can look me up on Facebook. I'm also on Twitter. Um, 
but I'm not really on the social media platforms because I just like talking to people on, on videotape. So, you know, I'm in Brigantia's <laughs> gilded, uh, gilded group, and uh, that's where you'll find me most often, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Awesome. So, guys, you know where to find us. We hope to see you soon. And bye for bye now. Bye for now.